Hey guys, this is Ryan Bishop, and today I'm bringing you a tutorial on the Java Swing library. So basically, Swing is a library of code used for creating windowed programs in Java, which is console-based by default. Now, in future tutorials, I'll be exploring how to create actual games in Java, but uh, for now, all you need to know is that Swing sets up the framework upon which we'll be building our games. Now, uh, Swing was developed to be more sophisticated, as a more sophisticated set of uh, GUI components than uh, the earlier AWT or Abstract Windowing Toolkit. So you might be wondering, what's the difference? Well, AWT is what is considered heavyweight, and what that means is it's uh, utilizing the underlying operating system for its functionality. The problem with this is that widgets for one OS might not be supported on others, or it might behave differently. In contrast, Swing is considered lightweight because it's platform independent. Now, Swing uses the AWT to create the window, but all the widgets and action handling are done in Java, which of course can be run on any machine via the JVM or Java Virtual Machine. An early drawback of this was performance issues, as the code had to be compiled and interpreted. But with system improvements, as well as improvements to the JVMs, this is hardly a problem anymore. Now you may also be wondering how Java stacks up against C-sharp. Well, the two are very much alike. Uh, some sources suggest that C-sharp was stolen from Java. Uh, admittedly, Java has quite a few syntactical drawbacks while c -sharp carries more functionality from its predecessor, C++. Of course, you have the different frameworks for developing games. XNA is a very clean and powerful framework for 2D and 3D development, and uh, I would also go into more uh, comparative detail in my future, future tutorials. Uh, one huge advantage of Java, as I touched upon before, is the idea of worm, which is write once and run on many. This opens up the possibilities for mobile development and much more. In contrast, c -sharp and .NET follow the paradigm of writing in any language for one machine. So uh, let's get on to the good part. Now, there are essentially three parts to creating a Swing application. Now, keep in mind, we aren't yet touching upon game development. Uh, the three parts to creating a GUI application are containers, components, and action listeners. Basically, you create a container that holds component widgets with action listeners that execute some code. And the key concept behind GUI programs is that everything is purely hierarchical. One way of thinking about this is by going back to design patterns. The way Java handles the component hierarchy is similar to the decorator pattern where components are added to one another to add complexity. Now, here we have a sample hierarchy. At the top level, you have the JFrame, which is the basic window we'll be adding components to. Now, you can add components such as a menu bar or button directly to the JFrame, or you can add other subcontainers, which can in turn hold components or containers and so on. So, once you've got your components, you want to make them functional, right? The way we do this, just like in C-sharp, is with listeners. C-sharp calls them event listeners, but in Java we call them action listeners. Now let's backtrack once again to the days of design patterns. Remember the observer pattern? That's what's being implemented here. And here's how it works. You create a class that implements the action listener interface. In doing this, you override the action perform method. But we'll come back to that in just a second. Now once you define your listener class, you add the listener to your component, and it sits there listening for an event, be it a mouse click, a text change, or what have you. Once the event takes place, it calls the listener's action perform method, which you as the programmer will have defined to do something in response. And that's about the long and short of it. Now I've got two projects to show the implementation of Swing, and you'll see why I have two of them in a moment. Now this first program is a very simple one that utilizes just a few of the Swing components, but it should give you a pretty good idea of what Swing is all about. So let's go through this line by line, and I'll be sure to add a link where you can download these projects to test out and play with them yourself. 
So basically, we're going to start out with our imports. Uh, you're going to import from uh, AWT. There's a few things you want to import from AWT. Uh, dimension, this is basically uh, gives you width and height uh, structure. Uh, flow layout, this is the default layout that we're going to use, and you'll see where that comes in later on. Uh, action listener and action event, uh, I went over that in the PowerPoint. Um, we'll see how those are implemented also. Then from Swing, you basically have all your components and containers. You've got the JFrame, which is the main comp the main container. Uh, J button, icon. Uh, J button is a component. Uh, icon can be used in conjunction with components. Uh, like I said, you'll see that in a little bit. Uh, J label. It's another component. Uh, J option pane. That's a uh, pop-up box, and we'll see that in a minute. J password field, that's another component that creates uh, password fields, uh, basically text that shows up as asterisks, like you would see in a password box. So we've got our test window class here that extends JFrame. So this test window is going to be a JFrame. And we're going to declare two buttons right here, button one, button two and we're going to declare two labels as well and uh, a password field and we're also going to declare a string to store the password so here in the constructor takes uh, one parameter takes a string as the title and basically what we're going to do with that is we're going to call the super and that's like calling the uh, parent class we're calling the parent class which is jframe and we're passing it the title so we're going to set the title of the window in that parent class. Uh, set layout, uh, flow layout. That's basically going to handle how our components are displayed in the window. So basically, the flow layout places each component from left to right on the screen. And when there's a new line, it will just go to the next line. Uh, button 1, we're going to create a new J button, and we're going to give this button uh, not a name, but text. So we're going to tell the text for the button to show up as unlock secret button, and I'll show you what that does in a minute. Uh, then add, this is very important, anytime you have a component, you have to add it to the hierarchy. So we've got our base container, which is the class itself, the JFrame, and we're going to add the uh, button. We're going to add all our components to it. Now, icon. We're going to create an icon, and we're going to make it an image icon, and we're going to get the class. Um, what this does is it's going to get an image that we specify in our package, and it's going to store it in an icon. So basically, we're taking an image and we're making an icon that we can use for components like buttons. Uh, so we're going to create another button. Uh, same idea, we're going to give it text, but we're also going to give it one of our icons. And basically, the inactive icon uses uh, icon1.ping. And we have that here in our project. And you can see down here, this is what it looks like. And icon2 is the same thing, but it's pressed. Now, down here, the button 2, see where it says uh, set rollover icon. So basically, when we scroll over this button, it's going to change its image to the active icon. And we're going to initially set this button, so set is visible to false. So we won't see this button to start with. Uh, then we're going to add that, like we add all our components. Then we're going to create our label and this is the text for the label which is where is the secret button and the uh, set tooltip we're gonna set a tooltip so basically when you scroll over and you put your cursor over the uh, the label this is the tooltip that's gonna show up and uh, basically it tells you what the password is and then what's what's that gonna be used for well we're gonna create another label here for password this is just gonna you say the word password um, 
then we're going to create a new password field and store it in our password field variable. And uh, I'm going to set the preferred size of the password field, which is the box that stores the password, and we're going to add that component. Now, we're going to create three different action handler classes. And the classes are actually created down here, but we're going to instantiate them up here. So you've got a button one handler, button two handler, and a password handler. Now, these two classes, the uh, button one and button two handlers, are going to handle what happens when we click on our button. And the password handler is going to handle what happens when we input a new new text into the password box. So uh, once we create those, we're going to add the uh, listeners to each of the components. And we're going to add the password handler to the password field. Now each of these handlers, uh, as I explained in the PowerPoint, we are implementing the uh, interface action listener. Now that only has one method that we need to override, and that's action performed. So action performed, we pass it an event that's coming back from the, uh, the uh, component we have. And basically when that event fires when we click on the button in this case it's going to perform this code it's going to execute this code rather um, so basically it's going to look at what's stored in password and if it's butter which is the password it's going to open up our pop-up panel the, our J option pane and it's going to tell us the uh, password was accepted and it's going to set the visible on the button to, to true. Otherwise, it's going to show a panel that says incorrect password. Now, the button to action handler, uh, that's going to show what's going to pop up when we click on the button to. Same idea, it's going to uh, show a J option pane that says the secret button has been clicked. And finally, we've got uh, our password input action handler and that is going to set the password to whatever we input into the field. Now this action handler, because it's, uh, it's an action listener that's on the password field, it's going to fire or it's going to be executed when we enter text and hit enter in the password field. And now we go to our main class which is called swing test and we've basically just got our, our main method here and we've got test window window so we're instantiating our test window class which is our J frame and that in turn is going to instantiate everything within the window um, we're passing in the title here remember that gets passed to the super class uh, we're gonna set the default close operation to exit on close. This is very important. You need to do this, otherwise when you close the window, it won't close out of the program. The program will keep running in the background and you don't want that. Especially for mobile development, if uh, you're on a phone, it'll drain the battery life and it's, it's basically, it's memory leak, it's bad. Now the set location relative to, this is going to set the location of our window relative to another window. Now we pass in null here, which means we're passing in no window. And what this is going to do is it's going to center our J frame, our, uh, our test window class. It's going to center it in the middle of the screen. And we're going to set the size of the window to 300 by 200. And we're going to set the visible to true. Now what you get when you run this, it's a very simple program. So basically, it's, uh, you've got uh, the button one, which is unlock secret button. When you click on it, you get a message that pops up, incorrect password. So i got to put a password in, but what, how do I know what the password is? Well, we've got a J label here. Remember, we, uh, we set a tooltip on this. So when we scroll over that, it's going to say, hint, the password is butter. Now, you won't see me, so you've got to take my word for it. I'm going to type in butter and hit enter. And then I'm going to hit this again, 
and it's going to say password accepted and the secret button 